Medicine is a truly fantastic career, but it isn't for everybody. Here are some things that if they apply to you, you might want to think twice and consider truly whether a career in medicine is the right choice for you. First mistake I see young people making is choosing to go down medicine when they are someone who doesn't like people. Now some people are introverts, some people are extroverts, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Some people get their batteries charged by people, and other people find them exhausting and feel drained by being around people a lot. A good way that I've heard it described is that, say for example have 10 energy tokens for a day, and if you're an extrovert, you're somebody who when you hang out with other people and spend time with them you get more energy tokens however when you're an introvert you tend to use up those energy tokens by being around people and after spending a lot of time around others you find yourself drained sometimes in medicine you come across patients who are self-absorbed they worry too much about little insignificant things they might not be particularly bright or be quite confrontational or even really ungrateful about the work that you're doing if you're not somebody who has patience and can empathize with that then you're going to find it really difficult and really draining. No matter what specialty you go in, even if you are a lab researcher, you spend time with other people, whether that be colleagues, even if you're an anaesthetist, you have to speak to parents or relatives of patients. So you're always going to be dealing with people, even if you work in a job where the patients are often asleep or kind of not in a position to speak to you. So it's really important to factor that in and be real about whether that is something that is going to drain your energy and give you a career that's going to kind of leave you exhausted a lot more prematurely than somebody else. Another reason that medicine might not be for you is if you're work shy. Now by itself there's nothing wrong with being inherently lazy. In fact there's a really good experiment they did called the von Manstein matrix where they looked at army generals and looked at intelligent versus stupid and lazy versus hardworking and whether it necessarily made a good general if they were hardworking and if they were intelligent or if there were any combinations that actually made a, for a better type of general. And actually what they found is that there are only four types of officer. First, there are the lazy, stupid ones. They say, leave them alone, they do no harm. Second, there are the hardworking, intelligent ones. They make excellent staff officers, ensuring that every detail is properly considered. Third, there are the hardworking, stupid ones. These people are a menace and should be fired immediately. They create irrelevant work for everybody. And finally, there are intelligent, lazy ones. They are suited for the highest office. Because what they're saying is that lazy, intelligent people are either working out what actually needs to be done or working out ways to do it efficiently so that they can do it the best way with the minimum amount of effort. The funny thing about medicine is that I would argue that you have to be both smart, lazy and smart, hardworking because on a granular level, every single job that you do as a doctor, you need to plan to be super efficient, assess whether it's a job that actually needs doing and is a priority, and on a granular level, make sure that you're doing as much as an effective job as you can with as minimal work as possible. However, on the grand scale, all of these little jobs add up to so many that you can't help but being smart and hardworking to achieve them all. So essentially, you're doing a big work to make sure that you can encompass all the jobs that you have to do, but on the job level, on a granular level, you're making sure that you do them as lazily, if you will, as efficiently as possible. Another thing to consider is that medicine may not actually stimulate you intellectually. I know that might sound weird to say, but actually there are different types of intelligence and medicine is a very specific one. That way really you just have to memorize vast amounts of information and understand how systems work. However, if you're interested in the hardcore sciences, and medicine is not a hardcore science, it's a social science, but if you're interested in something like physics, which requires creativity, progressive thinking, and you're always trying to move the needle, then it might not kind of serve you in the same way. Of course, this does have its place in medicine where people are researching and trying to discover new knowledge, but it's not quite as commonplace as you might think. Another really, really important element is that you're never really going to have a successful medical career unless you are 100% dedicated to it. I've never met a doctor who's done well by dabbling. This means that a lot of sacrifices need to be made in your personal life. And actually, you really need to work on skills of nurturing your family and your relationships to make sure that they don't fall by the wayside if you have a busy medical career. This is a skill that not everybody masters unfortunately and when you have a minimum of usually 60 hour weeks it is really difficult so I understand how people don't do it but it's something that you have to be aware of and develop that muscle of being able to juggle both your personal life and a challenging career at the same time. I am both a doctor and a dentist and it certainly is a challenge to keep your skills up in both. If you're trying to consider whether dentistry might be a more suitable 
football career for you, you might want to check out this video here where I do a direct comparison between my life as a doctor and that of a dentist. Another really, really important element is that you're never really going to have a successful medical career if you don't have the right motivations. A lot of the time, people want to go down the medicine path because of family members, parents, or even they just want the prestige. Let me tell you firsthand that the prestige of being a doctor wears off pretty quickly. Also, those who go down the path because they feel like somebody else was pressuring them, they do feel trapped quite quickly. When they come to that realization of that, they also have this thing of sunk cost fallacy, which is basically, I've come this far so I can't go back now. And actually they end up trapped in something that they didn't particularly want to go to in the first place. This is where I say, listening to yourself, being in tune with what your mind is saying to you, maybe even what your heart's saying to you, and kind of knowing whether it's right for you in your core and listening to that voice is so, so important. I go through a mantra in life of hard decisions equals an easy life, easy decisions makes your life hard. So basically taking the easy route, the path of least resistance, as people say, often leads to you making decisions that aren't actually the pain of going through the hurdle and actually lead to you being in a situation that was just the easiest one, not necessarily the one that you wanted. On the other hand, sometimes pushing through and going for something that is a bit more difficult in the first instance, like for example, going against what your parents are encouraging you to do, which might be medicine against your will, will actually lead to you being happier in the long term. So it's a hard decision at the start, but in the long term leads to a happier life. However, if you do want to study medicine for the right reasons, it is one of the most noble and satisfying careers that are out there. And that's why for the last 10 years, I've dedicated myself to helping young students who are applying to medicine and helping them get in. And if you want to find out exactly how I do that and the methods that I teach to help students and make sure that they maximize their chances of successfully getting into medical school, you might want to check out this video here where I talk about the step-by-step -step process of exactly how I help people get into medical school. Thanks for watching and I'll see you over in that video.